Hi, welcome back to the Woodshop Nerdery. This video is the second video in the Hans Wenger Folding Rope Chair project build. I take the paper printouts and turn them into templates. I make sure I have all my materials, supplies, and lumber needed to complete the project. I know some of you may consider these boring topics and honestly, so do I, but I find them so important to make the most out of my time in the garage. Okay, I've got most of the templates roughed out on the bandsaw or jigsaw, depending on which fit the need the best. And I've got my 12 inch disc sander set up, which is absolutely ideal for fairing these outside curves. So I'll be able to smooth those out, no problem here, and remove that material right onto that line. Then for the inside curves, I've got the Mark 7 set up in under table mode. And I've got a uh, two inch drum sander here, and that'll be perfect for these inside curves. And notice I have the drum fairly shallow underneath the table. When I sort of feel like the grit is wearing out or getting too clogged up with debris, I'll just go ahead and turn that quill handle a little bit to advance the quill to expose more drum. I'll also be using the dust collection system. That should get the vast majority of the dust keep the air in my garage as clean as possible. Now for some of the smaller radius inside curves like this one, I have a couple options. Uh, I could use some of these files and rasps like this to smooth that out. I could switch to a smaller diameter drum sander or I could sand those by hand.
here are all the templates sanded up and ready to go. I've decided that I'll transfer the other lines and markings from another paper template once I get the piece cut out. I'm going to go with white oak on this project and I'm, I'm going to be looking for some pieces with some curved grains in the board so that there's as many fibers running through the full length of the legs as I possibly can get for strength. And based on the plans I've made up, I know that I need lumber that is 32 millimeters thick and 30 millimeters thick. So I'll be looking for five quarter and six quarter rough lumber when I go to the lumber yard. In addition to the wood, there's other materials I need such as the brass parts to make the hinges. And I'm going to be referencing this hinge detail uh, by this article that I mentioned in last video by Caleb James in the June 2017 issue of Popular Woodworking. I've gone ahead and from McMaster Carr ordered the brass bar stock and I've ordered these shoulder bolts and I've got six of them because I'm going to be making two chairs so I need two shoulder bolts per chair and then I wanted to have some extras in case I screwed one of them up. I'll also need four brass colored washers and 12 wood screws. I looked through my hardware boxes and I couldn't find a good match. So I'll have to add those items to the shopping list. I'm going to need a center punch, which I have. I have the quarter inch drill bit. It's a pretty popular size. I got that ready to go. I inspected it. It's sharp. It'll do the job. I'll need to countersink the holes for the wood screws that attach the hinge to the wood frame so that they lay flush and that the hinge operates smoothly. I did look through my toolbox for my countersink bit, but I couldn't find it. But then I remembered that the last time I used it, I threw it out. It was over 20 years old and I had really worn it out. So I'll have to add a countersink bit to the shopping list. And then I need to look through my collections of tacks and dies for a 5 sixteenths by 18 thread tap. And there it is, 5 sixteenths, 18. So I'm good to go with the tap. I also need to organize supplies for weaving the seat. I found this blog on modernchairrestoration.com which explains how to weave the seat with the looped pattern rather than nails. And I really like that look, so that's the direction I'm going to go. So now I know how much cord I need to buy, and I can go to Peerless Rattan and order a 10-pound reel of the Lace Danish cord. And this company happens to be the maker of the YouTube video on seat weaving I referenced last week. To get the most out of the short time I have in my workshop, I like to plan ahead and eliminate as many of these gotchas as I can before I get too far into the project. Because as a weekend woodworker, I don't want to get to the point where I'm ready to drill the hole in this brass bar to find out that I got to run to the store and get a countersink. And then get all the way back home to the next step and find that I got to run to the store again and buy the tap. Okay, I've changed my mind on wood choice. I had originally planned on making all the parts out of white oak, but then I went to the lumber store and saw the prices for five quarter and six quarter white oak in the sizes that I needed. And I made the Hoosier step stool out of rough cut yellow birch that I found at Menards. And I really like how it turned out. I really like the grain pattern of that birch. And I think it'll be a good match for this project. I've carefully picked through the yellow birch lumber I've purchased and positioned my templates in the best spot. Because I'm going to be laminating these boards together, I'll need four of this pattern for each chair. And I've labeled it B times four. And I'm also paying attention to short grain situations where the wood will be the weakest. So for example, here the fibers of the grain are shortest through this section of the leg as it curves around. I've also got short grain here, here, and here. So when I laid out the next piece, I tried to rotate the pattern onto the grain to get the most difference in where the placement of that shortest part of the grain lands. So here, for example. And my hope is that it will mitigate the weaknesses due to the short grain somewhat, or at least as best as I can. Well, that does it for this Woodshop Nerdery video. The next video will cover the next phase of this project, which is sizing and shaping my work pieces. I hope you'll come back and check that one out. Bye.